God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. Have you heard that before? Yes. Well, that is true, but that exact phrase is not in the Bible. That's not a verse you can look up and find and quote to somebody and say, that's in the Bible. But those ideas, that sentiment, that truth is in the Bible, just in a little bit of a broader sense. And today I want us to dig a little bit deeper into that, how we are not qualified in our own ability, but when Christ calls us to something, when the Holy Spirit speaks and says, do this, that qualifies us, okay? So that's what we're gonna be primarily talking about today. Uh, And in that, we're gonna be going through a few different sections of, of the Bible and talking about examples of this, of this calling, and how the qualification process took place, and how there are really three things I want us to focus on in each of these examples. And those are the necessities of fellowship, the necessities of faith, and the necessity of surrender, okay? So now it's time we should probably open the Bible. So please, if you will, turn in your Bibles this morning to John chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. So this is a familiar passage to many of you, if not all of you, I assume. This is the story of when Jesus fed the 5,000. This is one of my favorite stories, and I feel like every time that I return to it, I get a little something different out of it. And I, I find that that is often the case, Uh, when reading God's word, how you'll read it one day and you'll get one thing out of it and you'll come back to it maybe a month or two later and you'll get something completely different. And that is the spirit. And I want us to to recognize that, that that is the spirit moving in those moments to give you the word that he has for you. So let's read together, beginning in verse one of chapter six of John. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. I just want to pause here and recognize that that passage. How often is that the case in life? Jesus, the Lord, always knows exactly what he's going to do. You know, it's never him just kind of like flying by the seat of his pants, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. The Lord is aware of our situations. He is aware of our circumstances, but he includes us in the process of unveiling that. You know, I think that it is a much more fruitful experience to go through the process of not knowing what you're going to do, trusting the Lord and allowing him to reveal his plan to you, than just saying, all right, Lord, give me step A, step B, step C, step D. There's no trust in that. There's no faith. And so I love this, that Jesus already knows exactly what he's going to do, just like the Lord always knows exactly what he's going to do. Let's go on. In verse 7, it says, Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? So we have a situation here. There are 5,000 people sitting, waiting, and this, this Passover feast is coming, and they have nothing to eat. It's a great need that is here, right? And all we have is this little boy, this lad here that it says, has five barley loaves and two small fish. They're not even big fish, you guys. They're little fish, all right? But look at what happens. Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. That doesn't sound like just a little. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the signs that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who has come into the world. This is amazing. This is a miracle. It's impossible. But where is the calling here? Where is the, are these three things, the fellowship, the faith, and the surrender? I think that those primarily in this instance come from this young boy. He is us in this scenario. We are the boy who had these five barley loaves and these two small fish. But first you want to note, we don't even know this boy's name. You know that? We don't, it's not here. It's just the boy. 
And that is kind of a picture of our service to the Lord. It's not about who we are. It's not about our name and, and what we have. It's what the Lord can do with the boy, with the fish, with the bread. And in this act of, of being called to give these things to the Lord, like I said, there are three things that I want us to focus on here. The first is fellowship. And when I say that, I mean the relationship. The, the relationship that this boy has with Jesus. Now, Jesus is someone who he'd been following, he'd been listening to. They were there to hear from Jesus. Now, if some random person had come up to this boy and said, hey, give me your fish, give me your bread, what would the boy have done? Absolutely not. This is my lunch. What are you doing? Get your own lunch. But he had this fellowship. He had this relationship with Jesus. And so when Jesus had the desire to take these things from him, the boy was willing. And the same thing goes for us when we are called by the Lord to do something that only works if we have that relationship with the Lord, that fellowship with the Lord. If we don't know him, then when he calls us to do something, we're going to think that's of us or it's something else or somebody else. We're not going to know that this is from the Lord, so I should do this. So the first thing that is required when wanting to be called and used by the Lord is having that fellowship with him, knowing who he is, listening to him, following him. That's the first thing. But then we have the second, like I said, this faith. Again, that was the boy's lunch. He brought it for himself during this time. It was for him. So he had to have that faith that, you know, this is mine. This is all that I have for myself. If I give it to Jesus, I don't have it anymore. It's not, it's not mine. But he does it because he trusts the, the Lord. He has faith that he has a need and he's giving it to Jesus and that he will still be provided for. He has faith in the abilities of the Lord to provide in this situation. And the same goes for us when we put ourselves in situations where the Lord calls us to something. Maybe we feel inadequate. Maybe we feel in doing something that we are stranded out on our own, but that's not the case. If we have faith in the Lord's ability to come through, that's our confidence, having that faith that the Lord will provide, that he will show up. Amen? Amen. And this third thing, this third aspect of this calling that I want to focus on is surrender. This boy didn't just give Jesus one fish. He didn't just give him two loaves of bread out of his five. He gave him everything. He gave him everything he had. He didn't hold some back and say, no, Lord, all right, I'll keep this one and you can have this one and you do with that what you will, but I'm going to take care of myself. He gave it all, every bit, all the fish, all the bread. He surrendered. And look at what Jesus did with that. My friends, in, in, in life, Jesus will call us, the Lord will call us to things that he wants us to do. Sometimes that means giving up something that we think we need. Sometimes that means surrendering everything we have in a situation, whether it's our will, whether it's our pride, whether it's our food. He will call you. And wouldn't you rather give it all to the Lord who has the ability to do anything, who has the ability to perform miracles, to provide every single time than say, I'm gonna take care of myself. Because look at what the Lord did with that surrender. He didn't just make enough for people to have a little bit. He didn't just spread out these tiny little pieces of bread and fish, everybody take a little crumb. That's not what he did. He performed a miracle in this. It was through that fellowship, that faith, that surrender, that we see this amazing thing and that so many people are provided for. And that's the other thing to consider here. The boy let go of what was his, of his need. And because of that, so many other people received what they needed. And the same thing goes for us when we're called. Sometimes we're so focused on our own needs that we don't allow the Lord to call us in a situation and use us to meet the needs of others. We don't know. The boy had no idea that the Lord was going to take his little fish and bread and feed 5,000, because that's impossible. That's not something that he on his own could comprehend. But he surrendered first. He had faith first. He had fellowship first, even though he didn't know what the Lord was going to do. And the Lord did it. Sometimes we don't know if the Lord is going to feed the 5,000. But we're called to surrender, to have faith, to have fellowship first, and trust that the Lord will do what he does.